Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you to everyone who watched the previous episode on Marvel's Spider-Man. In today's episode, I'm bringing you the Ghost Recon special where I'll feature both the photo modes in Ghost Recon Wildlands and Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The reason I'm doing them together is they are very similar with only some minor differences. I'll be breaking down each game's photo mode functions. Following this, I'll focus on this episode's special topic, tips for taking combat photography, where I'll break down some ways you can take action shots during combat skirmishes, where I'll share some tips I used during my time as a photojournalist covering protests and civil unrest. Finally, I'll conclude the episode with some questions I've received from the virtual photography community. Okay, so Ghost Recon, Wildlands and Breakpoint. Well, the, the photo modes, like I said, they're virtually identical. There are some very minimal differences, but I'm gonna cover them all together. So I'll show footage of Wildlands, footage of Breakpoint, and I'll say where there are major differences, but generally they are the same photo mode. Okay, basic functions. To enter the photo mode in either game, you need to click the L3 and R3 analog sticks in simultaneously. You use the L and R sticks to move the camera around your subject. And you can move it pretty far so it's got a good distance that you can pull away. You have L2 and R2 for craning, which raises or lowers the camera depending on whether you want an aerial perspective or ground level boots on the ground. If you click L3, that will toggle a grid of thirds. Now the grid is really good for spacing. Depending on how you frame, it's a good way of measuring where your subject is. I usually frame to one side or the other. I rarely frame centrally unless I'm doing symmetrical shots, but the grid is an excellent thing to use for guides, but do not forget to turn it off when you're taking your shot. If you click R3, that toggles the user interface, so that's to remove it when you want to take your photo. Square resets the camera, triangle resets the settings, and circle exits the photo mode. Okay, so that's the basic stuff done. Now each game has four separate tabs with different functions in them. So let's break those down. Tab one is camera. Also, if you want to flick through these tabs, you can press L1 and R1. So tab one, roll angle. This is basically tilting the image. So if you want to change, if you don't want the image to be flat, you can tilt it one way or the other. This is perfect for Ghost Recon because there's a lot of action, lots of movement, lots of chaos. Tilting the camera one way or the other will give it a sense of being off balance, being in motion, being in, in a kind of a situation that's unstable. Tab two is the lens tab. So first we have field of view. That's really a zoom function where you can zoom in without using the joysticks. So you can go super close or very wide. It's very impressive actually how wide you can go, but be careful when you go super wide because it will distort the image and it will look like it's curved. Then we have depth of field. You can turn that on and off. So depth of field relates to how much of the image is gonna be in focus. And then you use the next two sliders, the focus distance and the lens aperture. The focus distance dictates where the focus is going to originate. So whether it's five meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, really you want the focus distance to be where the subject is. Then the lens aperture dictates how much of that is gonna be in focus and how much of it is not. So you can have the entire image in focus if you wish, or you can have an incredibly thin strip of space in focus instead, and everything else will be blurry. It's really a style choice. It's a choice of what do you want to emphasize? Do you want everything in focus? Do you want everything blurry? It's really up to you, but you just, you can play around with that and see which one looks better. Third tab are world settings. So we have time of day. Time of day is excellent because it not just changes the time of the day, it changes the ambient temperature, it changes the color tone of the image because different times of day have got different ambient colors. Also, if it's a sunny day, it will look like a flash bulb, so you can create dynamic shadows on your characters if you wish. So that's a good thing if you really want a moody portrait and you want to... I always play around with the time of day on Ghost Recon because it, there's an optimum moment to take the shot, usually based on the lighting. Then we have weather. Weather also changes the ambient effects, changes fog, changes the kind of um, the, the rain, the, the sunlight. Use time of day and weather together because you can create some really nice combinations to really make the image stand out a lot more. 
and tab 4 are effects. So first we have filters. Now in Wildlands the filters are great. In Breakpoint they're awful because in Breakpoint you've only got, if I remember correctly, night vision and thermal. In Wildlands you have a whole host of sort of Instagram type coloured filters. Go through all the filters in Wildlands. In Breakpoint it will take you like one second but Wildlands is definitely better. Now filters are just there to accentuate the image or make it more interesting because sometimes images can look flat. Unfortunately, you can't change the intensity of the filter, so it's 100% or it's nothing. Next, we have grain. Now, the grain effect in this is very good, but when you add grain, it doesn't just add grain. It makes the image darker, and it also adds a kind of an artificial vignette to the image. So if you put the film grain right up to the maximum, you're going to be making the image incredibly dark compared to what it was. Now this can work, it can also go against you, so be careful when you're using it. Finally you have vignette. Now a vignette is a border on the image. The idea of a vignette is to focus the attention of the viewer on the centre of the, the shot. So the vignette darkens the edges of the image and it progressively gets lighter until you're in the centre and it's as bright as you would normally have it. You don't have to have a vignette. I don't use them during the daytime because it looks a bit weird. I generally use them when it's darker if I just want to lose the uh, focus on things on the border. There might be things in the border like leaves, trees, objects that you don't want people to look at. Vignettes are good ways of kind of changing where the person is immediately going to look. Okay, those are the photo mode functions in Wildlands and Breakpoint. Overall, it's, it's a pretty poor photo mode, very minimal, like there's almost no thought gone into it. You know, the sensitivity of the joysticks is also a little bit harsh when you're recompositioning. Very limited post-production options. And it, it, it is a little bit too minimalistic for a photo mode in the present day. You know, I feel like they could have done so much more with this. But saying that, as with every photo mode, if you're good at taking photos, you can take a good picture with a crap photo mode. It doesn't matter. You just maybe have to work at it. You maybe have to be a little bit creative, use the time of day, use the weather, use the the film grain, use filters, use focus creatively. So if you use all those things you can still do good shots but as a scoring system out of 10 I'd give the Wildlands Breakpoint photo mode 7.5 because they're very limited and they really should have had a lot more functions in there but you know it's still there so at least you've got it. Okay so that's the photo mode functions done. Now for the special topic which is tips for taking combat photography. So what do I mean by combat photography? Well, images that capture the action and the chaos at the best point to sort of convey what's actually happening. But they don't all have to be action shots, they can be the prelude or the aftermath, you know, those or anything, any image that's telling the story of a skirmish or a moment of combat or conflict. That's what combat photography is. It doesn't necessarily have to be guns, hand grenades, explosions. It can be the calm before the storm or it can be the kind of the the ensuing chaos afterwards. Now this is a genre of photography that's one of the most challenging as it really deals with so many different variables. It's really a process of repetition and trial and error. The first thing I would say is it's all about reading the situation and anticipating things happening before they happen so that you're prepared for the shot when it occurs. That's one thing I learned when I was a photojournalist. You've really got to have eyes in the back of your head or see everything happening around you in, in slow motion almost. Because if you take it at normal speed, by the time you see the moment, it's already gone. So one tip I'd say is initiate combat with a photographer's mindset. As in, have an idea of what you want first, then create it and freeze the action at the very kind of moment of it kind of being initiated. But as I said, it's not all about explosions, gunfire, and things like that. Combat photography can be about the feeling, the atmosphere, the tension, the anticipation. You know, like a shadowy figure hiding in the grass before they're going to take out a group of soldiers, or vehicles have been ex you know, blown up, or there's bodies everywhere, and there's someone walking away from a big explosion. Like something where it's like before, after, or during. Like they're all combat photography, so don't just get caught up in explosions and guns, although they are good fun. In the end, action photography, it's the same as any type of photography. It's about telling a story. You know, the story of a moment in time and timing it so that people can feel or experience that moment without actually having been there. 
And obviously it's tricky because it's a very fast paced, especially when you're dealing with skirmishes. Sometimes you don't have that coolness to take the shot. But so what I would say is if you're going to take combat photography, have that mindset when you're going into those situations and initiate and just time it. You know, you'll get the timing wrong a lot of the time because it's split seconds. It's micro moments. But when you get it right, wow, you're really satisfying. So trial and error, perseverance, heighten your awareness, heighten your anticipation. Okay, nearly done. We have a few questions from the community. So three again today. First question, I use the time of day function because I like sunsets. Any other tips of using time of day? Well, I like sunsets as well, but time of day, you know, it can change all sorts of things. It can change the shadows. It can change the color of the environment, ambient temperature, weather. Time of day, every game should have that function because it really does give you such freedom. If you don't have it, you have to go to a place at a specific time. Very frustrating. I use it a lot for lighting. You know, you treat the sun like it's a big flash bulb and wherever the sun is will dictate how your subject is lit. So use it not just for sunsets, use it for lighting, use it for shadows, use it for ambient colors, all sorts of things. Next question, any tips for taking shots in Ghost Recon games online as you can't freeze the action? Well, yeah, when you're playing with friends online, that is a frustration. But then again, it's also a benefit because you could, you know, you can play with your friends. And then when you get to a point where you think, OK, this will be a nice photo. Yes, you won't be able to change the position of your character once you're in the photo mode, but your friends will. So you could maybe direct three of your friends to do certain things. So you could frame it, put them in the position and say go. And then, then you could take a whole bunch of shots during that. So, yes. You can't freeze it, that's a limitation, but it's also something that frees you because it gives you and your squad an opportunity to set things up live in the photo mode, like you're taking a real photo rather than everything's sort of frozen in time. Final question today, how should I photograph my guns in Ghost Recon to get the best effect? Well, if you're a gun aficionado, you know, the, the Ghost Recon games are like gun porn. There's ridiculous amounts of guns and some of them look amazing. If you want to take a picture of the gun when it's kind of being used to get the full effect, I would take silencers off because the silencers muffle the sound, but they also limit the kind of the, the, the effects that come out the end of the gun. When you're not using a silencer, it will have like a more, but like a fire effect at the front. The guns are very detailed, so you can go very close. You can go, you know, like all sorts of angles, like facing the barrel, looking down the barrel at your subject who's firing it. Generally, guns will look better when they're being used or things like that. So it's, it's really just tr also try and think about what skins to use, depending on the environment. Like if you're in a jungle and you're using a jungle camo on your gun, that might not be the best to use if you want to take a picture that's emphasizing the gun, because the gun will, by the emphasis of the camo, will be less visible. So maybe use different colors depending on different environments if you really want to showcase your guns. Take the silencers off and just experiment because you know there's so many guns so many variations and they do look great so think about the camo think about having the silencer off think about using it in a certain situation and also the positioning just to get a kind of a nice effect okay we are done another episode in the can i think this was the ninth episode or the tenth i can't even remember now i've done so many thank you for watching i, I really hope it's been useful um Ghost Recon is one of my favorite games, so the photo mode in that, I use it a lot, although it's not great, but I hope the tips and the information that I've given you will make the photo mode fun for you and easier to follow. To be fair, it's pretty basic, so I'm sure you're probably fine at it already, but hopefully I've given you a little bit of a insight or a little bit of knowledge that might make it even more fun or even more enjoyable. So go out there, enjoy it. If you want to share any photos with me, you can tweet me at photog underscore gamer. If you've got any questions about the games or questions about photo modes in general, comment on this video and I will reply as and when I can. Again, thanks for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll continue to do another episode soon. The next episode is going to be the Kurosawa special, which is on Ghost of Tsushima. It's going to be a black and white cinematic feast, so look forward to that. In the meantime, have a great day, stay safe, be well in this strange time and I will come back with another episode very soon. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.